Steve King of Iowa joins me live. Congressman, thanks so much for being here. So it sounds good in principle because thanks, who likes the rich? They, they, they just they seem like they have more than we do. But on the other hand, they are the ones who give us our jobs. Well, you can almost hear, Megan, the bitterness in Doug Schulman's voice when he announces this. There's, a, there's a, a tone of animosity towards the rich when he speaks of this globalization, this game changer that he referenced, uh, to go out and build a network with Japan and Germany, Canada, Australia, and Great Britain, uh, to go after the wealth in the world and try to do a more effective job of taxing and that wealth and punishing the producers. And you know, no one ever got a job from a poor person. And this country is founded on free enterprise capitalism. That's a basic principle of American exceptionalism. This president has said about the sharing the wealth mantra that he pointed out so well to Joe the, Joe the plumber and building an administration that goes out and does that. Money and capital is going to go where there's the least resistance. Uh, that's why these corporations have been chased overseas in the first place. Now they want to chase them off of the globe. There seems to be an assumption uh, that the rich are dodging the tax laws. And, you know, many believe that that's true, that the rich pay fewer taxes than the middle class because they have so many tax shelters that they, that they take advantage of. Is there some merit to that argument? Well, there's, there are tax shelters, obviously, and they're created because of the IRS code in the first place and their effort to chase this money down. The other side of it, there are varying statistics, but uh, one that I recall that I, I can't cite the source, so, is that the top 1% pay about 40% of the taxes. So uh, any way you look at it, the poor aren't paying any taxes, any net taxes. The middle-income people are paying a smaller percentage of the taxes, and the richest are paying far, far more as this tax policy moves forward, and they are poised to accept now a tax increase as the Bush tax cuts expire, with this administration not just poised to extend them, but to make sure that they end and increase taxes. So I think this is an anti-business climate. We've watched this president stand and support the initiation and then follow through on the nationalization of eight huge private sector entities, three large investment banks, AIG, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, General Motors, and Chrysler. That's about a third of their private sector profits. Now we have health care essentially nationalized on top of that, and they're reaching out to chase down corporations around the globe and working in conjunction with those other countries I mentioned. This is an anti-capitalism, not just an anti-corporate administration. And I fear for my country if we can't stand on the principle of free enterprise, Megan. Well, what's going to happen now? I mean, you, know, you mentioned the things like health care and already the tax rates are going up on the so-called rich, and now we see this special tax group dedicated to just basically, you know, following them and looking through every line item on their tax returns and so on, uh, as if, you know, there is a, arguably a presumption that they're doing something wrong in terms of hiding dollars. You know, what happens? Do they go over to a country like Ireland, which has, you know, minuscule tax rates compared to the United States, or do you actually foresee an exodus of business in this country? Well, an exodus of business in this country and an exodus from businesses that have already exited this country and gone to places like Ireland, where the last time I was there, there were 560 American corporations that had changed their domicile to Ireland for this very tax reason. They may have to move and go to another country that's more favorable, and, and I don't know exactly where that will be. I'm concerned about that. The, the discussion now, open discussion about instituting a VAT tax to further sap the productivity of America. And, and let's just Further explain what government. that is. It's, it's a, it's a value-added tax, which is not, it, it basically goes into all the products you buy. It's not like a, a sales tax where you would buy a cup of coffee and you'd see, oh, there's an extra line item with a little tax. It, it goes in at every stage. It's like when you buy your shoes, mm -hmm. it goes into the le leather and, and, and all the products that make up the shoe. So you don't actually see it explicitly, but it could be as much as like 7% more for goods. And this was just advocated by John Podesta at the Center for American Pro uh, Progress, this, this VAT tax that, that that could, could be facing Americans to pay for the huge deficits that we're now facing. Well, that's, that's right and well explained, Meg. And at, at every stop on the supply chain or a loaf of bread, you tax the wheat, the person that grinds the flour, the flour, the baker, the retailer, all the way up. Uh, Europe has, has had this for some time. That, that is something that is just chilling to free enterprise and chilling to investment. Uh, so, and by the way, Paul Volcker also spoke in favor of this uh, just the other day, as well as Podesta. So, this is something the administration is floating a trial balloon on. And, you know, until the American people get their back up, and I mean completely get it up, and they got it, they, they got, they stiffened their spines very well against Obamacare and didn't quite get that killed. 
That needs to come out 100%, by the way. But we're going to need a greater effort yet to fight off the tax increases as we're seeing the nationalization incrementally of corporate America going into the hands and the control of the White House. This is so, this is so un American to take away free enterprise and tax it at every stop and grow government to the point where what is left uh, eventually if you follow this path it'll just be the butcher the baker and the candlestick maker that maybe don't quite feel the direct reach of the White House meanwhile on April 21st okay. they're brag dragging the CEOs before Congress to browbeat them for complying with the law well uh, we appreciate your insights on it Congressman King thanks so much for being here